Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for November 21st, 2023. Well, let's take a look at what happened overnight here. We had um, just a little bit of shift maybe happening here after a big strong day yesterday. We've got Asian markets that ended up closing flat, but mostly lower as China continues to struggle with their real estate crisis, it continues to deepen and is requiring the government to step up with more bailouts, um, trying to um, hold on to that situation, trying to prevent it from um, you know, cascading into even more problems. As we take a look at Europe this morning, Europe is mostly lower. We have the DAX just slightly up. Everything else is just slightly down um, over there on the European side of things. U.S. futures this morning are also looking a little bit on the bearish side. We had a report already this morning from Lowe's that disappointed here. Um, they're suggesting that um, the future does not look as rosy as um, a lot of folks would um, be hoping for here in Lowe's. So keep a close eye on that today. And then if we take a look in um, oil and energy, oil is moving just ever so slightly lower. It was up nicely yesterday as um, uh, they continued to talk about cuts over there in OPEC. <laughs> but uh, demand concerns starting to worry the market here just a little bit and we have natural gas just ever so slightly up if we take a look um, at our bonds this morning bonds continue to stay pretty soft we have the two-year bond that's crept up just a little bit at 4.91 percent while the rest of the bonds are holding down pretty solidly. Um, let's take a look at our US dollar also showing signs of continued weakening here in the market and that would be very very good for our commodity prices. So what does all this mean for today? Well how about we settle in, let's buckle up, let's get ready for the Tuesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again everyone and thank you so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. How about we take a look at these charts, try to shake off a little bit of a bias here, see if we can figure out how we might approach the market for today. Well, yesterday was an extraordinary push to the upside, just continuing to move, and it was mostly driven by the Magnificent Seven. That's one of the things that we've seen this market doing because we have so many of the big techs in all three of the major indexes that um, we can really push the indexes higher and higher and higher with just a few stocks moving. And that was really the case yesterday. You'll want to notice that as we stretched out here big time yesterday, volume was relatively weak here on the day. Now, continuing in this upside trend, if the bulls can continue to find that inspiration, um, that next area up here that we might look to test is right up in here. You can see we tried earlier in the day to pop up there, and actually, I think I need to adjust that just a tiny bit higher, somewhere up in here. If we can continue to find that bullish inspiration here today, continue to stretch into the holiday, keep an eye on that whether or not we can push up there or not, we'll have to wait and see. This morning we have just a little bit of bearishness showing up here in the market, but nothing major. Let's look for a retest of this price support area right in here after breaking through. If we can hold that up here, then we're golden. If that were to slip and we would have pushed back down in here, Breaking back down below, we'll probably look for maybe a test down in this area. And failing through there, you know, we we got that low right in here to maybe look at. And then a big gap below. If we were to really get those bears going, we could see an ugly pullback here in the market. 
if we take a look at our spy spy also very nice moves yesterday again driven mostly by the magnificent seven we really smashed through this resistance here yesterday continuing this parabolic move to the upside very very strong move and who who knows how much longer this parabolic move can continue to go it's it's getting a little bit nutty here at the moment but that doesn't matter as long as the bulls want to keep buying then we still have upside uh, potential in here now looking at this chart uh, pushing through that resistance here um, I'm going to look right in here. There's a little teeny tiny bit of price resistance right there. And if we can see those bulls continue to follow through here today, maybe push up into there and then try to break out. Because if they can break out of there, then we're probably up here testing the highs for the year in the S&P 500. And way, the way the Magnificent 7 is running, there's every reason to believe that that's possible, particularly with the NVIDIA report after the bell today. Let's take a look here and you can see that if the bears were to find inspiration today and push back, then pushing back in here to catch a little bit of price support would be rather likely. Um, and if that does not hold, maybe we slip down just a little bit further into here to test some support. Beyond that point, you know, breaking below this low here, again, drops us into that very big gap. And it's unusual to leave so many giant gaps behind is what we're doing right now. Huge giant gap here, gaps here, giant gap here, gap here. So we've got an awful lot of air underneath <laughs> this market. And if the bears were to find some reason to push lower, just be prepared it could be a little bit painful so far there's no signs of that at all let's take a look at the qqq qqq also just ripping to the upside new highs for the year like i said it was going to be a little bit disappointing if we got all dressed up and pushed right up here to test that level and we're just unable to push through well they got her done yesterday pushing through in a big way of that as that magnificent seven continued to stretch now one of the things you want to consider is just how parabolic this move is and um, with a little bit of bullish push beyond that point if we pull all those back you can see we've got a little bit of resistance in that chart right across here so that next level that i'm looking at in here would be up in here if those bulls continue to push pressing into the all-time highs now we've got to break through this and keep going to make all-time highs in the market certainly doable the way the market has been acting it's all buyers all the time but if um, the bears were to find some inspiration here today pushing back here to test the support area it looks like a logical place to um, to rest for a little bit if that were to fail if we've sliced on through there then we might actually be looking for a little bit of price support down here on the lower side of that price action and then beyond that of course we fall in to that big gap again and come back to this bigger area of price support in the QQQ. And then looking at our IWM, IWM as you can see continues to lag way behind the market. Um, although it was bullish yesterday, we rallied up here to test this big resistance area in the chart, but just didn't have the gumption to do much more than that. IWM continues to be sufficiently weak compared to the other indexes, and it's simply because we don't have the, the influence of that Magnificent 7 in here. If this is our upside trend, that means we still have a long potential wait or rest in here in consolidation. And as I mentioned in the diamonds, you can see that volume has been quite weak here in these charts. We were a little bit weak here on the QQQ, even below um, average uh, volume here as we continue to stretch to the upside. Let's take a look at our VIX. Our VIX continuing to fall. We may be running into a bit of complacency here in the market with this zooming rally to the upside. But if the bulls can continue this push and there just seems to be an unbelievable desire to chase stocks higher right now. And a lot of that has to do with corporate buybacks. I know that's true. I know it's not just retail chasing, but um, a lot of the corporate buybacks going on pretty strong and heavy right 
right now trying to fulfill all of that work before the end of the year. So keeping an eye on this, um, we came down in here, tested this little support area in the chart, and there's every reason to believe the way this is moving that we can just push on through, keep coming on down, and maybe even be down here in a 12 handle here before long in um, our VIX if those bulls keep the energy up. If the bears happen to find a little bit of um, energy here and they wake up a little bit, maybe we bounce up off of here a little bit, relieve some of that overbought pressure here in the market. When I say overbought pressure, well, the first thing I'm gonna do is run over here to T2122, and that is the four week new high, new low ratio. You know, the thing about this, guys, is it's not arbitrary. It just simply is the four week new high new low ratio of all the stocks out there we're trying to determine which are making new highs and which are making new lows what was interesting yesterday is as we were continuing to stretch to the upside take a look right here we actually pulled back a little bit here in our t2122 meaning that there were actually a few more stocks making new lows than were making new highs yesterday and that's just that influence again of the tech giants really driving this market um, substantially so here we are again we find ourselves up here in the bearish reversal zone that place where remember this index cannot go above 100 there's just no way that it can uh, or this indicator and if um, the bulls continue to find inspiration today just note that we're running out of that space here to the upside to to keep driving uh, driving through so if um, if the bulls find inspiration, look for it to be a little bit light on volume and, and, and maybe kind of stretching out here um, just a bit um, as we head up. Now, remember with that NVIDIA report, things could really change here today. We could really power uh, the QQQ higher here on NVIDIA alone. But at the same time, if it happens to disappoint, just imagine what could happen there. So if the bears find inspiration, well, by golly, we've got a big open space here to the downside that we can move if the bears do find that inspiration. If we take a look at our T2108, I got to tell you, this was good for the bulls yesterday. T2108 continuing to expand, meaning that we had a percentage of stocks going above their 40-day moving average actually improved yesterday continuing to move up so that shows the strength of this momentum that we're carrying this market higher about 64 we're coming into uh, close to about 65 percent of the stocks above their 40-day moving average and just realize how big a change this is from three weeks ago we were 15 percent of the stocks above their 40-day moving average and we have just zoomed up here to 65% of the stocks above that area. Now, keeping in mind, when we reach up here between this range up here, we're reaching that extreme level in the market. And we'll wanna be watching this closely as we continue to push to the upside that there may be a letdown coming here sometime in the near future. I don't know when, and I'm certainly not gonna predict that, but watch that closely up here as we continue to extend. Same thing is true in the T2107. T2107 continued to stretch yesterday, um, um, although it, it's lagging a lot behind the other indexes, and that's really just the, the effect of uh, the small caps, that small cap, the IWM, just isn't performing, and that's continuing to keep this a little bit on the weak side. As you can see, pressing up here into resistance, it did improve yesterday, 43% of the stocks above their 200-day moving average. We've got a nice little pattern in here, though. This is a very, very bullish inverted head and shoulders pattern. Break of the neckline looks really good. We'll see how we deal with this resistance here in the chart and see if it can push on through. And if it does pull back, it's really not a big worry because we have such a nice little support area here in T2107. Our uh, T2101 continued to show that breadth breaking through to the upside. So that momentum breadth to the upside is really strong here. And again, I think that's largely due because of the light volume yesterday 
I think it's largely due to corporate buybacks happening in the market. They're really driving that money here into the economy, particularly into that Magnificent Seven. One thing you do want to uh, kind of keep an eye on is just the extreme uh, price to earnings ratios that we're starting to see in these techs. They are just so elevated, it makes you wonder um, how much, well, maybe all the metrics of the market have just completely changed, that nothing's, that nothing is uh, following the norm anymore. And that could be true, but it is a very unique situation here in the market. So keep an eye on that as we continue to drive that momentum up. We might be seeing that point in time where we could ease that here you know could happen any day so let's take a look at our economic calendar here for today our economic calendar well we've got a few things here to pay attention to but honestly it's a very light day overall we've got a chicago official uh, <laughs> Chicago Fed National Activity Index report here today at 8.30, probably going to be mostly ignored. We've been ignoring quite a few um, reports in, in some of these areas. We, uh, we just kind of key in on the good data. We ignore the bad data here in the market. Um, um, existing home sales will be out this morning. Um, keep a close eye on that. These might be heating up here again. Um, with the decline in um, in mortgage rates. And if that does um, occur, watch this carefully, that might be inflationary. If we take a look for the rest of the day, we've got two-year bond auction, we've got a 10-year tips auction, and we've got the FOMC minutes. You know, um, we almost always get some kind of volatility around the FOMC. Um, it, it's not uncommon either. We get some volatility here in the morning and then it just kind of dies off. Um, we get really light and choppy in the price action waiting on the FOMC. Get some volatility around it, but honestly, I don't know that we're going to learn any more from these minutes. Just, uh, you know, keep an eye on it. There could be some um, whipsawing going on in the afternoon as a result. If we look into Wednesday, durable goods, that's a pretty important report here on uh, Wednesday we'll want to be paying attention to. Remember, we've got those mortgage applications that have been improving because of the, the declining um, rates. Um, jobless claims will also be out. I'm going to start watching for that possibility that this could begin to increase. And the reason is we really are starting to see our consumer slow down here in the economy. Uh, consumer sentiment will be in there as well. We've got a petroleum status. And then as we wind down the day, we've got some bond auctions, um, EIA, um, a natural gas report will be in there. And then the Baker Hughes rig count as we slide into the holiday. Remember on Wednesday, everyone, going to be the big getaway day. This is supposed to be a record travel holiday. Kind of expect volumes to drop really fast. And it may start today, volumes dropping out of the market. So be careful not to over trade. Let's take a look. Um, oh, by the way, I should make a mention of this so that everyone um, knows. Um, Thursday, of course, right way options is closed. We were, are also going to close on Friday. Highly recommend everyone be very, very careful on Friday, just simply because it's a short session. It can usually just be a lot of program trading. Remember, everyone's traveling, so kind of be careful um, in trading those days. But we'll be closed Thursday and Friday, so don't expect a morning market prep that day. Um, let's take a look at um, our, so, or excuse me, let's take a look at um, some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube, click that bell icon when it pops up. Make sure you click those thumbs up buttons and leave a brief comment because that helps the channel more than just about anything to grow. If you feel like I've earned that, please follow through and do that. I'd appreciate it. And also uh, feel free to share these videos out on your social media feed. That helps the channel to find more folks and um, 
grow the channel. So thank you so much to everyone who does take the time to do that. Let's take a quick look here at some stocks that could be setting up. And remember, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. You need to do your own due diligence. Be very, very careful in this market. Expect some volatility to come in here soon, particularly if those bears wake up and decide to um, eat just a little bit. We'll see. But um, if that were to occur, a lot of these could shake out and maybe turn a little bit um, um, bearish. And just simply because we're so stretched out, uh, chasing long right now might be a little bit difficult thing to do. Um, take a look right here. Pay PayPal, nice little pattern here. I made a price alert across this pink line all the way across here as a price alert. You can see that this has been moving up in this nice little upside trend. We're popping up here through our 50-day moving average. This is what we call a rounded bottom breakout. Like this chart's looking um, really good. So if that can pop through this area here, might be of interest to me after sliding out, breaking that downtrend, holding those higher lows. Keep an eye on PayPal. Uh, 3M looking very much the same. Nice little upside move here in that chart. You'll notice crossed above its 50 day. One thing you'll want to notice here is that 50 day is still dropping. We need to see that 50 day starting to flatten out and turn over to the upside. That creates that nice little support area in the chart. Place a price alert here on 3M looking for that opportunity that that may push through just like we have been here alert there pop you get the entry alert here pop you get the entry just looking at that um, following through again to the upside take a look at chewy here chewy um, kind of setting up um, now i have a little bit of a bias on this i did nibble a small position here in chewy it's going to report on 12.6 and all i'm looking for in here is maybe this to rally toward that earnings report but watch that closely nice little resting pattern here one of the things i'd like to watch for is initially we have this this range where we're kind of volatile after a big strong move like this and then we start to tighten up as we move out here toward trend. So watch that carefully to see if that can pop on through to the upside. SKLZ, another pattern, popped yesterday through that area, ended up pulling back a little bit, and that's okay. Um, we still have um, our trend out here a little bit. So if we have to rest a little bit more in here to get that going, um, I think that's um, perfectly fine to watch something like that. Um, SKLZ trying to show some of that bullishness. Other places that I think we need to be paying attention to, um, take a look at stocks like um, GDX. GDX has been coming up to test this downtrend and we're really at the cusp of a decision here. Will this be bullish and pop through back up here into this area or break down? One of the reasons I think there's a chance it could break higher is just simply because of the weakening dollar. If the dollar continues to weaken, commodity prices typically rise. So if we can pop this downtrend, hold up here as a higher low, then there may be some more upside coming here in gold. Keep an eye on that. I, I saw um, uh, Barry Gold made a nice little bounce here yesterday, putting in a possible higher low here on that chart. Also trying to break that downtrend here. So watch that carefully. Um, Newmont Mining did the same, pushing up here, putting in that little higher low, gonna challenge that downtrend here in the chart. So watch that carefully. If the dollar continues to weaken, we should see those commodity prices move to the upside. Um, that being said, I'm keeping a close eye here on Alcoa. Alcoa slipping out from underneath its downtrend starting to show some signs of bullishness in here if we can hold anywhere in above this trend watching that to see if that can move on up to the uh, through the upside and um, copper doing the same copper had a good day yesterday here in fcx breaking through the downtrend so now any rest consolidation pullback that holds this support area in here sets up that opportunity uh, of the trend and we would look for that upside uh, to move, particularly if that dollar weakens. So there's a few things for you to look at. As far as some big tech, well, I would be really careful with a stock like um, Intel here. So stretched out, I would expect this to pull back in any time. And as a matter of fact, it could pull back 
pretty substantially. So be really careful here on something like Intel as they continue to stretch. And then if we take a look at our financial sector, financials, um, I got to tell you, this extreme rally that we've seen here in the financials, um, I'm going to be watching this for a potential pullback, and it could be a substantial pullback because we're seeing some um, some issues and problems starting to show up here in the banking sector, um, particularly with what's going on over there in China, and all of that is starting to spread um, here in the world around the world, and our banking institutions are hemorrhaging money um, off off their books, uh, balance uh, debts, or, excuse, I was going to say balance sheet, but off their book debts are, are a tremendous. It's around $80 trillion that our major banking institutions hold in debts right now. So be really careful here. I think there may be some problems coming. Um, I, when it starts, I don't know, but watch those financials out there. A little bit overextended here in the short term. So with that, everyone, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great results in your trading. Thank you so much for being here and listening. And if you're taking off for the holiday, have a wonderful Thanksgiving with yourself and your family. I want to wish you all of the very, very best. Be safe. Be careful. I'll see you right back here bright and early Wednesday morning. Have a great day, everyone.